welcome to Dynamite Delight. Now, ladies and gentlemen, let's make this clear ahead of time. Was this a good show? Yes. This was a good show. Will it make an increase in ratings? Probably not. But you never know. Now, the reason I'm bringing this up is because of how different you see AEW compared to Impact Wrestling and NWA's pay-per-view of Back of the Attack. I'm sorry. You see it. You see the better camera work. It is vastly superior. Now, I know there's people who said, What's, wh 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 can't you see they were having problems? Look, I'm saying this again. And I'm not saying I had any complaints. But I'm saying this again, just in case someone new sees this. I'm not a show for AEW. I am someone who cares about seeing a good wrestling show and doing a good review so you guys can get a decent idea of what you're going to look at if you haven't looked at it or if you want someone's opinion that you have seen it and you want to know if your opinions coincide with somebody else. And the camera work from NWA sucks. It doesn't make a difference who left and who controlled production. I know who it is. It doesn't make, for me personally... He shouldn't have left because of the controversy. He should have stayed around and waited until he was taken to court. That's how I feel about it. I didn't address it before. This is how I feel. But when him gone, it makes no difference. You put on a show where you're required to pay $20 to see the damn thing. Where I would have thought it would have been wiser they didn't do that so they can drum up some interest. But they didn't do that. They're on fight. They want to get some money. That's how they did it. So they're going to be criticized. Then you got Impact Wrestling and Impact Plus. People are paying for that service. Same thing in Fight TV. So, both companies, they cannot be excused. Camera work sucks. That is what is going on right now. And I'm going to criticize them. When they do great, I'm going to tell them they did great. When I'm going to criticize them, I'm going to do it. Now, opening. We got Kenny versus Matt Seidel. Matt Seidel gets his shot last week. Being told last week, you get this shot. If you win, you go all the way to the front of the line as number one contender, and you get the shot against the title. Well, the guy who holds the title is Kenny Omega. <sighs> There's a lot of people who don't like this. I'm sure of it. Because they care about the ranking system. And there's people who don't care. They're happy to see it because they think the ranking system is possibly restrictive. What I said, and I still stick by it, there's nothing wrong with keeping a ranking system as long as you do have these loopholes once in a while, but it's got to be once in a while. you got to do it in moderation. And lately, they've been doing a lot of these bypasses, and I'm sure people are not liking it, and sooner or later, it's going to come to a head. Now, was the match good? It actually was good because of the different dynamic. You got Matt Seidel, who's a much more smaller stature wrestler, compared to a Kenny Omega, who is at least easily average to above average in size. He's not like a full size wrestler like you normally see over six foot tall easily. Kenny is near six or he is six. He's not a very tall wrestler. He's not a big ass monster wrestler. He's a average size, mid sized person. So you got a smaller guy like this. You got Kenny who's like about this. And then you got some of these big guys that are here or at least here's Kenny, here's some of them. That is how it is, which is not bad. It helped in the dynamic of the match. It flowed quite well. He got thrown around, and that's Matt Seidel. And when you see a V-trigger hit him, it felt like it was devastating because he's such a smaller wrestler compared to Kenny Omega. And I didn't expect Kenny to lose here, but Kenny did get pissed that he had to go through so much. And that, that was good. Lance Archer had his moment to talk, saying that he respects the thing, but still... I am it now. Don't get in my way. Don't. Because when the time comes, I'm coming for that TNT title. It was good. And the best thing, there was no Jake Roberts. Fine with that. That's the way it should be. Now, Kaz and Christian have their moment from Impact Wrestling. Kaz uh, confronts Christian saying, so when are you wrestling? You want to wrestle me? Pretty much that's what he was saying. And now we got a match next week. Which is fine. That's actually a good thing. Since Christian needs like someone that he can really deal with. That he still remembers when he used to wrestle. Kaz is a good choice. Both of them have been in the business almost the same amount of time. So that's not a bad thing. 
In fact, they could start a feud from that, and that wouldn't be a bad thing, particularly once Christopher Daniels gets involved because he was dealing with Christian Cage as well. He can go through Kaz, he can go through Christian Cage, and then he can go through all the other people. Now, we got Team Taz having their moment. Team Taz saying that they're united, and pretty much Taz saying that Cage apologizes for what he did, and he even apologized to Starks, and he 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 just apologizes. But you see, Chris, well not Christian Cage, you see Brian Cage. You got a lot of cages. You got Brian Cage going like, but he has to be and says we're together. But you can see it's coming, kind of like what happened with the Elite. Brian Cage is gonna break away. Counts when, but who knows when. Um, the Pinnacle versus, um, Martin from Top, I'm one of the uh, Major Brothers, no, Martin Brothers, not Major, I'm thinking about somebody else. The Martin Brothers, I can't remember, Dion, I think that's the one's name, I am bad with names, guys. If you say I'm not a fan, I am, if anyone knows me, you know I'm bad with names. Flat out bad, especially if you don't see them often. And you got the Varsity Bonds. Now, the person love, you know who I like in the Varsity Blondes. That is Brian Pillman Jr. I'm hoping he gets somewhere soon. But you got FTR and Spears going up against them. It was a decent match, but I did not expect the Varsity Blondes to win here. They got destroyed. And then you got Pinnacle cutting a beautiful promo, making it very clear that the Inner Circle not only is done, where are they, the cowards? And then Shivani trying to defend them, but then you see a very determined to prove that he is the boss of the pinnacle in an, an MJF to a Tony Schiavone saying, you want to say something? And Tony shuts up. Perfect. That's the way it's supposed to be. And we're going to move on. Um, Let's see here. QT Marshall. I, look, if you saw the interview, it is obvious he wants to break away. He won't say it. He said he just wants to be respected as, as not just a friend of Cody, but an equal, just as good as Cody Rhodes, introducing his wife, beautiful woman. He asked Cody to come out, even though he didn't think he was going to come out, and he wants an exhibition match. Cody did come out, and he said, look, if this is what you want, fine. You want a match? Fine. But I'm going to let you know right now. I'm not giving you a disaster kick. I am not going to give you crossroads. I am not going to be rough with you. And Art can be the ref. This is how it's going to go. If you want a real exhibition match just to show how great you are, fine. Look, I'm not the be all, be all end all. But you have done a lot for this company. And I wouldn't do this for you. But this is an exhibition match. This isn't a real match. So that's what he wanted. Now, how the match going to go down? It looks really obvious that it's going to be someone getting really pissed off that he gets his butt kicked by a Cody who's in a sling. Actually, in this arm. He's in a sling. So it's going to be interesting how they're going to book him getting so pissed. What will he do? Will he attack Art Anderson? Will he attack Cody? Will he flip the script throughout most of the match or at the end or the beginning of the match? They have many options. The most boring one would be to let him go through the entire match and not do nothing. And they let him stew. Now, most people say that's the perfect way to do it. I don't. In this situation, it would be better to show some type of aggression. Then, then you got Dustin coming out and then he walks away. He doesn't become totally aggressive, but he becomes aggressive enough that it is Dustin he has to issue with. Not Cody, not Art, not anyone else. It is Dustin. That's how I feel like it should be. But this is just me. Conchi versus Nia Rose. A repeat from the Elimination Tournament. I think Nia Rose wasn't totally fond of this because the way it looked... Look my face. The way it looked, Nia Rose... She is still green in the business. She's like eight to nine years in. Some people don't find their stride until like 10 or 11 years. 
when they really get good. That that happens. But you can tell sometimes, not every time, but sometimes when a wrestler is not fond of this. When they're not fond of it, because when it came to this match, near the end, it just felt sloppyish. But it didn't look sloppiest in the sense that Nia Rose was really wanting this. It, it, it kind of felt like she was a little off. Then when it was over, you get Bunny coming out, whooping some ass. Well, that's after Nia Rose and, and Vicky was already beating up Kanji. And then you got Sheeta coming out, attacking a Nia Rose. And then you get the Bunny coming out and attacking Sheeta. So, what do we got here? Matt coming out, pretty much saying, hey, this is what's going to happen now. My people are tired. They're going to get what they are. So, does that mean you're going to have Nine Rose eventually joining the Matt Hardy brand along with Vicky? That would be an interesting thing. You already got a whole bunch of guys there. You got, you got basically Private Party and Butcher and Blade. Wouldn't it be interesting to have Bunny, also have Nia Rose and Vicky Guerrero? That might actually be a good combination. That's just me. You tell me below because they're just going to have a tag match next week. Um, Let's see here. Jade Cargill has a quick vid pack. The same as Scorpio Sky. And I'll get to him in a minute. She is dominating. She is powerful. She's beautiful. But she still sounds a little choppy talking. Just like when you saw her match, she has great power. And she's doing not bad, at least from this first two matches. She got a lot more to learn. She's green. As green as this. She is green. You can tell from Jade she's green. But at least they are booking her correctly. Give her some short vid packs. Give her some short matches to hide her weaknesses and go with it from there. If they start extending her before she's ready, you're going to see how bad she is and she'll be worse than China when she first started out. And you don't want that from a monster like a Jay Cardigo. I'm here. She's probably here. She would destroy my ass. Before I tell her I love her and, and, and can you hug me first before you beat the shit out of me. <laughs> that would be it. She faced me. You know, boy, I'm going to whoop your ass and say, okay, fine. You're going to whoop my ass if I touched your ass or insulted you. But at least give me a hug first before you kick my ass, okay? <laughs> Maybe boob right there. Because I'll be here. She'll be here. Her boobs will be in my face. That, that That's the truth. I'm a short guy. I'm 5'8". She's like 5'11". Maybe 6 foot tall. There you go. Now, um, what do we got here? We got Lucha Brothers. And, hmm. Should I leave this for the end? Yeah, I'm going to leave it for the end. We got the match of Silver versus A. Derby Allen, which was the best match of the night. You got two guys of the same height. One is different from the other. You got one who's extremely thin and extremely fast and agile. You got another one who is thick. Thick. And legitimately, Derby Allen is taller. This is how Derby Allen is. This is how Silver was. He is legitimately shorter than Derby Allen, who's not a tall guy anyway. This was an interesting match. You got two small guys going at it, and one of them is literally strong enough to be able to take on a full-size full six-foot-three guy. He could probably lift the same amount of weight as that six-foot-three to six-foot-five guy. Bench press the same amount. Just because he's short does not mean he doesn't have power. And the guy has tremendous power. He literally grabbed a Derby Allen and being from one turnbuckle, he threw him legitimately about the same height or higher than his own damn head. It was a good match. Of course, Dark Order got involved. Of course, Sting got involved. But this was a match that was varied. You got one guy who's not a high flyer in a silver. He's mostly... A ground and pound guy. Then you got Allen who is a high flyer. Who can do ground pound and do bit of submission. But it is still one who's just thick. Who pounds you. The other one is thin, fast, agile. And can do various things to a certain degree. Of course, Derby Allen won. I didn't expect him to lose here. 
Matt comes out and attacks. Then everyone comes out and attack. Dark Order, Matt's group, everyone. Do I believe that's the best thing? No, because we already just had this earlier. Don't know what's going on. Matt did this earlier. So, I, I don't know. Sometimes you should not overdo it. Finally, the Elite is over. The Bucks and Cutler versus the Lucha Brothers and Diego Kidd. Now, I remember seeing him with Angel Garza in Impact Wrestling. Now, I don't remember Angel Garza's original name. It's been too long. I forgot. But I did like what I saw from Angel Garza and Diego Jr. No, no, le, di, le, le, sorry. Le, re, ah, I am bad with names. I called him the kid back then, and I'm going to call him the kid now. Ah, I hate when I forget names. I suck with names. I'm surprised I ever remembered my own name. Actually, fun fact. You don't know this. My original birth name, I didn't use. Nope. I'm not going to say what it is. If anybody does remember what my original name was, if you've ever heard me say it, that name I didn't use until after I became an adult. I used my middle name. My mother never let me use my first name. In fact, I didn't realize I had it because I, have, I hadn't used it at all for so long. As a kid growing up, I was saying, what is this? Because I didn't even remember I ever even had another name other than my middle name. And I used it until high school, until someone called me to the office and said the original first name. And I said, I don't know who that is. And pretty much, <laughs> that was the name I had to remember. I said, oh, I forgot. <laughs> but in this situation, was it a good match? Yes. It wasn't great. It was two six-man tags. I'm not fond of them. You guys know that. But it wasn't bad like the other one. But in the end, this was what mattered more than anything. When it was all over, you got literally Kenny coming out, beating up on the, the Diego, La Diego kid. Beating up on him. Uh, he cuts a good promo. Pretty much saying, look, we've known each other 12 years. We're more than friends. We're like family. I could have gone off to greener pastures. And I could have ended my ass off inside of catering of a cafeteria. But no. You know what I chose? I chose you two. I chose both of you and helped to create this promotion that we all thought about for three years. And yes, I understand you've been having problem with Don. Yeah, I don't agree everything with Don. I know you don't agree with him. And I don't agree with everything that Don says. But he was right. What are you? Who the hell are you? And who am I to you that in this match... You didn't even bother to call me. You called Cutler. Not me. You called him. I thought we were family. Now I'm giving you one last chance. They refused. He begged them, almost begged. They refused. Then there was a scuffle. Kenny gets hit in the mouth with a mic. And the Lucha Brothers basically... Give him something to remember. And now we're done with the Elite. And am I happy to see the Elite over? Actually, I am. They were the first. They were the, not the first, of the Inner Circle. The Inner Circle is the first faction made for AEW. But the original faction that started AEW was the Elite. But look how it is. Hangman Page working with Dark Order. Cody has a nightmare family all on his own. And the only ones that were left was Kenny and the Bucks. And basically, Kenny's gone off with the Good Brothers to recreate the Bullet Club. So there was no Elite. There was only Matt and Nick. There was no point in keeping it. It was time to end it. The original faction that started AEW finally has ended. And it's good to see that because they needed to do it. It was time. Now the question is going to be, how far are they going to go with this? Because if you remember seeing the Mox and the King and now... You got Kingston leg in a cast, and Mox spoke very simple. I don't know the Bucks. I don't care about the Bucks, but they saved my butt. I don't like owing anybody, so I gotta thank them. But you guys better understand something. We don't play around. This is a war. We're coming after the Good Brothers. We're coming after Kenny. But you better know what side you're on. 
You better make your choices. So now they have. But this just me. Have a good day. Have a good night. Peace.